Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the class camera shake? Let's run through a quick little example. The camera shake class allows us to play camera shakes, and we can basically shake, move, oscillate, and change the field of view on the current player's camera. So let's look into this. The camera shake can be created by going to Blueprint Class, and then under All Classes, you can type in Camera Shake, and you'll find the Camera Shake default class. Now note I have a few underneath it because I have already created a few. You're going to want the default Camera Shake. And this is an asset that defines how to shake the camera in a particular way. So let's go ahead and click on it, and hit Select, and it'll ask us to name it. We'll call this one our new camera shake. And we'll open it up. Now when you first open it up, you're going to get a full blueprint graph. Now the camera shake itself is usually just a data only blueprint. We're going to want access to the class defaults. So what I like to do is close it the first time and then open it back up. Because there is no data in the blueprint editor in the blueprint graph itself, Unreal Engine will detect it as a data only blueprint and then show us just the defaults, which is great. And of course, if you want to go back into it, you can click here. So let's go over our settings. At the top, we have Camera Shake Single Instance. We're allowed to play this instance of a Camera Shake more than once when we use the Play Camera node. For example, you could apply the same one twice so you get twice as much effect, or maybe you want one to give it a little bit of a left and right motion and then maybe another for more left and right but you have them randomly set up so you want to give it a more of a jarring effect. If we have this checked we're only going to allow one to work and basically anytime we try to call it it's just simply going to restart the timer. Now our main settings are going to be these three here. These are con going to control the duration and how smoothly it works. So oscillation duration. What we're going to do for this example is I'm going to go through and adjust these and show you what the difference is as we set them so we can get a feeling for how they work. Duration is simple. It's how long our duration is. Zero is nothing's going to happen. Greater than zero is our duration or length of our shake. And less than zero means it's going to shake indefinitely until we stop it. Let me pull up our example that we're going to be using. It's going to be our play camera shake. And this one's pretty simple. All we're doing is playing the camera shake with our default settings and then changing our text to show that. Let me change our shake camera class to new camera shake, compile, compile, and hit play. And you'll notice by default, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen because we need to open up our camera shake and set a duration. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to two seconds. We'll go ahead and compile and hit play nothing's still going to happen. By default, our camera shake has zero settings. Absolutely nothing is set up. There is no default camera shake. That's why you're going to need to set it up yourself and determine how you want it to work. So let's go ahead and set a rotation oscillation for pitch just to show how it works. I'm going to go with 10 and 10. And this time I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we'll notice nothing happens. Unlike a normal blueprint, which will automatically compile it when you hit play and get the freshest version, you need to make sure you compile your camera shake or it's not going to apply the settings. Now you notice when I hit shake, we have get a little bit of a shake. We're basically nodding up and down. How this works is we have our rotation oscillation. If we think of our player as a sphere in the middle here, and we can go ahead and we'll pull up our little rotation node here. Rotation oscillation will rotate along here, so up and down, or it'll rotate on this one for left and right, or it'll rotate here for around the middle. Let's reset that back to default. And that's our rotation oscillation. So right here, this Y value is going to be our pitch, our forward and backwards. That's why if we have it set to 10 and 10 with a random offset, these are our defaults for the most part, and we run it, you'll notice it's basically shaking up and down. It's rotating our camera along the Y or the pitch. Now these values here. These two values determine basically how smooth our shake is going to be. Let me set them to zero. And let me set this to zero. 
compile it and save and we'll look and see what happens. So we have our camera shake. Every single time it's going to go from the start, it's going to go oscillate up, oscillate a few times as in shaking up and down, and then it's going to come to a stop. And you'll notice the stop is very abrupt. Basically it looks like my screen is just snapping. And that's because it is. Let me stop this. The blend in and blend out determine how smoothly our sinusoidal wave or a sine wave is going to go from the zero value or no movement up to the one value which is our full movement. Basically the camera shake is going to use a sine wave and ramp up between no movement to full movement based on your amplitude and frequency but the rate at which it ramps up and down is determined by our blend in and blend out. So let me show you the blend out. Let's set this to one on blend out and save. And you'll notice this time we're no longer going to get our snap at the end. It's going to slowly ramp down from the full speed to zero. We'll get a smoother transition. And of course we can apply that to our blend in time. We'll set that to one and compile. And now you'll notice instead of immediately snapping up, and doing a full, our full value of our rate wave, we're going to slowly start, go to full, and then slowly stop. And of course that is determined by our duration. We change this to 4 seconds, and hit play, and then run our shake. Our shaking amount itself in the middle is going to go ahead and last longer as we ramp up, and then we ramp down. So basically this is going to determine roughly in a second the duration of the blend in how much it's going to oscillate. Easiest thing for me to do and I recommend is how smooth do you want it to start and how smooth do you want it to stop. Those are our values here. I'm going to set these to zero so I can show some of the other changes. So we have our oscillation for the rotation and this is an amplitude, a frequency, and an offset. Let me set these both to zero and our offset to zero. What this is going to do is basically it's going to move zero for the value. It's going to do it zero times and it's going to start off zero for the offset. So if we were to run this, hopefully you'd expect nothing to happen. Our amplitude will determine basically how much it's going to move from the starting position. So we'll do 20 and we'll hit play. And you'll notice, well, nothing's going to really happen here. Technically, something is happening. But because of the way we have this set up, we're basically telling it to, okay, we're going to move 20, but you're going to start off at zero. We're not going to have a random effect. We're going to have zero. And because of that, nothing's going to happen. If we add a frequency, any value above zero, and we go ahead and run this, now you'll notice I have a shake. Depending on my duration, depending on my amplitude, and my frequency will determine how much of a shake I get. What I'm telling it to do is start at zero. We're going to move 20 for our sine wave. So we're going to go up 20 and down 20. And we're going to do this over a frequency of 1. Now with a frequency of 1 and a duration of 4, we're basically going to end up with this. We move up fully, down fully, we start our next bottom part, and then we're done. We want to move faster we're going to change our frequency. How frequent is our sine wave up and down going to be? How frequently we're going to go from the top of our amplitude and the bottom of our amplitude during our duration. So you set it to something like 10, much, much larger, and hit play, we get a much more violent shake. We are telling it to frequently, that's why it's called frequency for the most part, it's the easiest way to remember. We're telling it to frequently go from the top of the bottom, use our sine wave. Now let me go ahead and change this back to zero for our frequency and set our offset to random. And now we're actually going to see something happen. When we hit the play shake, you're going to see shake started and you're going to see it offset. And then after four seconds, we're going to go back. We'll hit play shake again. We'll get a different offset. This time it's much larger in the positive direction. Run it again. Now we get a medium value in our lower direction. The offset random will basically start with a random offset value based on your amplitude, the plus and minus, so it'll go up 20 or down 20, and it's going to start off at a random offset. 
Now, since we have no frequency, we don't actually tell it to use the sine wave to move the head up or down our camera. So we're basically just offsetting and then doing nothing. We, of course, set this to something like 2. Now, we have, now we're telling it to use our sine wave. We go ahead and hit play. We'll go ahead and play our shake. And now you'll notice it starts and it runs our shake. Now let's run it. And you'll notice it starts basically at the center that time and it went down. We'll play it again. Now it went all the way down and started moving up. We'll hit it again. And now it started again and went down. And basically you're going to get a random start direction and a random offset for whenever you hit play. So that's what our random offset is going to do. So if you want it to be a little bit more of a random effect based on when you get hit, then you want to keep it random. But let's say you're pre-programming it and you want a shake to be directional. Maybe you want the shake to be based on them getting hit in a certain direction. Then we're going to go ahead and want to set it fixed probably. Now that we know how these work, let me go ahead and set this to zero. And this will apply to all of your other values. That your yaw is going to be one of your directions. So we'll go ahead and set this to 20 and 2 as well. We'll set it to 0. And we'll run this. And now you'll notice not only we're we going up and down, we are going left and right. And of course, if I play our last value, 20 and 2, whoops, 20 and 2. Let me go ahead and hide this one. There we go. With 0. So I have 20 and 2 with 0 for all three values. And I hit play. Now you'll get this really weird effect because we're rotating along all three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z, the pitch, the yaw, and the roll. Now let me reset all of these to zero so we can move on to our next section. Our next section is our location oscillation. Now one thing you may not know, you can just hold down the shift key and click on any of these rollouts and it'll roll out everything instead of just the one below it. And hopefully you can assume and understand how the next portion will work. It uses the same theory. You have an amplitude, how much it's going to move, frequency, how often it's going to move, and your offset for each of your location values. So like if I set this to 20 with 1, let me go ahead and hit play, and it will play shake. You'll notice it's changing the location of the camera. It's moving the camera forward and backwards for our camera shake. And it would be the same thing for all of our other values. We'll go 20 and 1 and hit play. And now you'll notice it goes left and right along with forward and backwards. And then you could, of course, do the same thing with our Z value, 20 and 1, and play. And now you're going to notice up, down, left, right, forward, and back. Kind of like a little bit of a zooming effect where your sight is going in and out. And that's because it's moving the location of our camera during the shake. Let me reset these back to zero so we can move on to the last section for the top part. We have a rotation, location, and the last one is our FOV off oscillation. FOV oscillation is going to be how much your field of view changes while it's oscillating. Basically, let's set this to zero. Let's go ahead and run this and you'll notice nothing happens. Let's change our offset to something like 20 and 2 and play it and you'll notice it moving in and out. Now it may look similar to when we moved our location, but it's not. It's changing the field of view. The field of view basically is kind of like zooming, a zoom effect. So if we make this a much larger value, let's make it something like 100 and hit play. You'll notice we get an effect like this. Field of view is how much you can see your field of view is what it is. And most games, for example, might use a, a field of view to determine how much you can see or adjust the field of view if you're zooming in and out like on a sniper rifle. Like there's a way to zoom in and zoom out. So maybe if you want it to look like the player is fading in and out of existence, you can use a field of view, shake, something like that. So that's what our field of view oscillation is for. And of course, you can combine all three of these to get your effect. The last section here is going to be our anim shake. There's no real reason to cover this. Basically, you have your play rate, your scale, blend in and out. This is your smoothness, just like up here. And then it allows you to choose an anim. And this is going to be a camera anim asset. So if you've created a camera anim, 
and the camera anon is covered in a separate video. This is basically like using matinee to create an animation for the camera. Maybe you want something specific for your shake, something that you can't really express in random. You want a controlled shake using your actual curves here. You can apply a camera anim and then have it play that so that way you have something more controlled. This is going to wrap up our camera shake. It's useful if you want to give some sort of feeling and weight when something happens in your game. You can also use it for nice special effects such as your player is going through a portal and you can pull out the FOV oscillation really simply and just have it like warp out and then snap back in. Keep in mind the camera shake is just an object. It's just something that is used. We are using it in our example in the play camera shake node. There are other nodes based on if you want it multiplayer or single player and there's ways of starting and stopping. Those are all covered in their own individual videos.